an anadromous fish is a fish whose life history is such that they are born in a freshwater en environment and then migrate to a saltwater environment at some point in their life to feed. And then once they mature, they migrate back to freshwater to lay their eggs and then that pattern repeats itself. And when you look at that, do you imagine, so the, the classic anadromous fish is the salmon. Yep. You, you mentioned that you feel that his home is freshwater. Yeah, they're, they're, they, any salmon species, and, and trout for that matter, can only spawn in freshwater. So okay. they're sort of fundamentally a freshwater species. Going to sea is, 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 is sort of optional, and some, some salmon and some trout don't. How, like, where did it develop? So they obviously, start, historically, they were a freshwater fish. That at some point figured out, hey man, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go reap the rewards of the ocean. That's a little bit debatable the origin, but oh, really? sure, that's that, that's the way I view it. It works for me. Yeah. No. Do the uh, like the opposite of an anadromous fish is a catadromous fish, and then it's, it's hard to rattle off a bunch because there's one. It seems. <laughs> well, there's there's lots of species of eel. Those are the common example, but the American eel, the European eel, lots of others. There are certainly some other examples. Um, but yes, the opposite life history pattern. The fish is born in salt water, and for some period of its life, it migrates to fresh water, feeds there, and then returns to salt water to spawn. And then talk about how the, the distinction between the, the anadromous fish might you might tend to think of them as in the north. Yeah. So that that life history pattern is driven by a, basically a disparity in um, food resources. So in, um, in, the, in the north, at high latitudes, the ocean environment, um, you know, I think of the ocean around the cabin, it's very, very, very full of life and compare that to, you know, somewhere down along the equator where there's, there's not a lot of, you know, biomass of living things. Lots of diversity, but not a lot of biomass. Um, yeah, I mean, like if you went down and went up the Amazon, you're gonna encounter sort of like a biodiversity and richness of life. In freshwater down there. In freshwater, yeah, it's different. Yeah. But like in the north, you're out in the ocean, it's like huge marine resources, but then you go up and there's, it's kind of like a low biodiversity. Yeah. And, and low nutrients. And, and, low, and a low, low, just a low level of productivity, yeah. So in, in high latitudes, the ocean is much more productive than freshwater. In low latitudes, closer to the equator, the freshwater is much more productive than the ocean environment down there. It has to do with nutrient limitation and other things. Um, so you can see how a pattern would evolve, right, through natural selection where a certain fish develop um, a life history pattern where they move to the more productive habitat to feed at some point during their life. And so for fish in northern latitudes, um, and presumably southern latitudes too, that's an, an anadromous life cycle where you move from your natal freshwater and go out to sea to spawn and then the opposite pattern. So rattle off more anadromous species. Um, Pacific salmon are a great example. So there's five. Atlantic salmon, well seven if you include the two Asian species that don't occur on our side. Uh, Atlantic salmon, shad, all of the smelt, Why sturgeon. That? Like roe shad, hickory shad. Yeah, yeah. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Anadromous, catadromous. Catadromous. Anadromous and catadromous.